Don't you just hate it when the YouTube host says, what's up, people? As if he can hear you say, oh, man, my car's busted. That intro is as dumb as a sack full of sockets. All right, you have a fifth gen Nissan Sentra, years 2000 to 2006, and you received a trouble code P0301, 302, 303, or 304, and that corresponds to plug 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, my research indicates, well, first of all, I was getting a misfire on plug number 1. Now, my research indicates that the uh, first thing you check is the spark plugs to see what the problem is. Now, I was skeptical that the plugs were a problem because they weren't that old and they were good quality plugs. The next step is the coils. Now, the coils could have been a problem because they were original and they fired billions of times over the years. So now take a look at these plugs. So if you look here on plug one and plug two, you can see a black mark on the porcelain. And what that indicates is, is that the electricity was traveling from the electrode down to the body of the spark plug and, and firing across there. Instead of these two plugs, which have no mark on the porcelain, where it was firing between the electrodes. And that's what it's supposed to do. Incidentally, these two plugs were hard to get out, which is surprising because I always use a uh, anti-seize lubricant on plugs before I install them, and you should too. Now, how do you do the repair? First is you take this bolt off. You can use a Phillips or a socket. I prefer a socket because you will not strip out the head of the bolt. Then you disconnect this electrical. You just press down on this little tab here. That comes off, and this is your coil, and your coil comes out. Now you take your spark plug out. You'll need a small spark plug socket, an extension, and a ratchet to remove the plug. Now you don't need a fancy spark plug removal socket like this one. You just need a ratchet. Once you've taken the plug out, it's always a good idea to put them in, a, in order so that you can see if there's any problems with those spark plugs like I did here. Next, what I do is I clean the threads. Now my thread cleaning tool will not fit down in this tight space. So what I did was I took a tap and I glued it to a socket and I have a small handle here. And the reason I have a small handle is I want to very gently turn this handle, just gently to clean those threads. You don't want to start new threads, and you can easily do that with a tap. If you start new threads, you're going to end up with a lot more problems than you started with. So you gently clean those, those threads. So I replaced all four of these, now once you've got the plug in, uh, yes, and the plugs, they have a, a torque value of 14 to 22 foot-pounds. This is not a high-performance vehicle, so I usually torque to the mid-range on that. And then you put this back in, the coil back in. You put the bolt in. And there is a torque value for this. And that torque value is 33 to 44 inch pounds. It's inch pounds, not foot pounds. So here we go. We're going to tighten this thing down. Now, I prefer a deflecting beam torque wrench for small, uh, small fasteners because they never go out of adjustment unless they're physically damaged. So we want 33 to 44. I'm going to go 40. That's 40 inch pounds. Now it's tight. And the last thing I do is I just slip this on. And that's it. Now I bought the plugs from Napa and I ended up paying $5 more per plug than I could have elsewhere. 
I bought the pack of four coils from AutoZone, and the reason I selected AutoZone was because that was the only uh, vendor that had plugs or coils that had a guarantee printed on the website saying it was a limited lifetime guarantee. So I went with those. Now, the proof that this was the cause of the problem is that I've been driving around with this for a month. No codes have been thrown. And actually, my car idles a whole lot better than it did before. So previously, when I would reach a stop sign or a stop light and be waiting at a light, the engine would have a little, um, just a little roughness, just a little roughness. I call it a, a nervous tick. Well, that's gone. The car runs smoothly. It runs beautifully. And uh, that's the end of that problem. So give it a try. It's not that hard of a fix to do, and you could save yourself a whole lot of money.